Okay, you might see, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you might hear the ultrasonic cleaner in the background. I've put most of these parts in and most of them have come out now. Um, the crankcase is still in there because I'm still trying to get that wrist pin freed up from the connecting rod. But here's the head and how it looked, or how it looks now after the cleaning. You see it looks perfectly clean now. Uh, I put this cam cover and, and bearing in there. This was pretty much already clean, but as you can see, the discoloration or staining, mottling of this was not able to be come off. That would have to be polished off, and that's not something I typically do here. So, here's the cam followers that were stuck initially, and these push rods are so clean now that you can actually see where they were heat treated on the ends to harden them. before they were just, you know, a solid brown color. So, with this done, I'm going to go ahead and put the valves in. So we've got our intake valve. Intake valve is larger than the exhaust valve on this engine. I'm just going to wad up a fresh, clean piece of paper towel. Put that in there. It's real fun. I gotta put my magnifiers on. Get my little open end wrench here. Now these OS keepers are these two piece little things here. Maybe I should be doing this on a paper towel. They're hard to pick up. Somewhat more difficult than just a, a Sato one, which is. It's always easy to get that one in. First side, getting one in is easy. It's getting the second one in because you kind of have to angle it down a little bit here. And if it doesn't want to go in right, you pull it out with the magnet. Start over again here. And there you go. There's one in. Hope my head wasn't in the way, but I really need to be able to see what I'm doing to do this operation. First one is always so easy to get in. It's just that second one that's always kind of a bear. A lot of it is just kind of trial and error and feeling it. And then you get lucky and it goes in. Oh, those springs are really, really taut. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go right now until I get this connecting rod off. Okay, I had a breakthrough. This thing was in the ultrasonic cleaner just long enough that it was able to come out. It's not like it's hot. I do a bunch of oil in there. So, there's our piston now. Out. And it's got these little Teflon Teflon retainers in there. So what was happening was this, exactly. See how it was doing this number? Well, I managed to get it freed up enough so that it would do that. So now what I want to do is I want to push those things all the way out and really make sure that thing gets cleaned up. Because it was just... It's 
just this little bit of you know either rust or a little bit of something this is steel so it can rust but it was just a little bit of something resistance there that was causing it to really grab that bronze bushing on the connecting rod so now that's off and since these things have already been through the ultrasonic cleaner pretty much clean so you can see this piston looks brand spanking new it's a little bit of something there I might go in with a little q-tip but for the most part that's done so now we can press the crankshaft out and get at these bearings okay I want to show you bearings are out crankshaft bearings you can see oh, this thing's really hot you can see how much crud is still in there not too cruddy looking down in there this is going to go back in the ultrasonic cleaner and get that stuff cleaned up uh, as far as this crankshaft goes looks kind of rusty I might actually run it through some CLR which is calcium lime rust remover and then yeah this rear bearing sounds nasty spins but it's got yeah they're both loud both of those bearings are trashed so we'll have to get some replacements on order for now these things other parts need to go in here and oh, god bless they're hot oh, that's hot so those parts are out now it's a matter of getting bearings on order except since I'm also working on this engine I'm probably not going to order bearings until well, I know what those are. I'll just order a set of bearings for that anyway. So, we'll continue on then. Okay, I'm not really quite sure why I didn't film my doing this, but if you look at this crankshaft now, I don't know that my video editing software will let me do a screenshot or a freeze frame, but you can see this thing looks brand new now. And all I've done was I've got some L or basically the equivalent of CLR calcium lime rust remover and I just use a q-tip and I just dip the q-tip in there and just rub this on and it eats away rust really quickly the kicker with this method is it cleans the surface rust off of metal parts extremely well the thing is as soon as you're done with that and this that CLR is very caustic if you don't wear gloves like I'm not wearing gloves and you have open little cuts or scrapes it gets in there and it burns but anyway once you clean a metal part with that CLR like that you have to clean it with alcohol immediately afterwards and then coat it with oil which is why this has a sheen on it I've made sure that I've got this coated with oil because what it does was when it dissolves that rust it really opens the pores of the metal and you can sit and watch, literally, watch. If you just leave, you dry it off, and you just let the part sit for 15, 20 minutes, you'll actually see the rust start to reform again. That's why you have to seal it, basically, seal it with oil and make sure that it stays coated with oil uh, throughout the process of assembly. And then, of course, once it's in the engine and you run it, it's going to be coated with oil anyway. And I've got a little residual oil on my hands, so I'm just kind of wiping over parts. just part of what I do. I like to keep all of my metal parts lubricated. So LA is totally awesome cleaner in the ultrasonic to clean carbon off. And well you know what let's do a little demonstration here. Let's see how much of this is actually rust. Let me get a fresh Q-tip here and let's see about cleaning up this bearing just as a demonstration. See how that Q-tip is just turning red from rust? Now I'm not ever going to reuse this bearing. I'm simply doing this just as a demonstration to show how this CLR really attacks rust. 
Now as soon as I do this to this thing and then let this bearing sit, it's going to lock up tighter than the drum. In fact, I can probably just drop the damn thing in there and you'll be able to see it really just start to bubble up as it eats that. So it eats that rust away. But just enough in there to keep that thing just submerged like that. Like I said, this is pretty caustic stuff, so it'll really screw your day up. It'll take black oxide coating off of screws. It's pretty nasty. Probably do the same thing with this guy. I'm never going to use these bearings again, so I don't really care. But pretty nasty stuff here. Now I turned off my ultrasonic cleaner just for this demonstration. So I'm going to turn the video off and turn my cleaner back on. Okay, this is the final segment. It's going to be a pretty damn long set of videos here. So I just took this crankcase out of my cleaner. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. So now I just need to oil it up and get some bearings on order. So, just for giggles, let me get a new fresh paper towel. Put this bearing on here. And I'll zoom in on that. So you can see how it really cleaned up those, that race. Of course it's notchy as hell now. Now this race didn't clean up. And the reason it didn't clean up is because that isn't rust. That's carbon. And totally all and uh, CLR is only really going to do anything for carbon. It dissolves rust. So anyway, that's what it'll do to bearings. So now I can throw those bearings in my dead bearing bin. And end this portion of the video.